Good morning and welcome to our morning devotion today on the 4th of December. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning we'll consider a hymn um, from yesterday. Sing praise to the God of Israel. It's number 936 in the Lutheran service book. You can probably guess from the birth date of the author that it's not included in the Lutheran hymnal. Um, since he was born 14 years later than the publication of that book, but it is in our worship supplement number 797. This hymn, it's a, I guess, a versification of the Benedictus or the Song of Zechariah from Luke chapter one. And so I've uh, chosen to use it for our Sunday morning Advent services this year in place of the Gloria and Excelsis. Uh, as long as I remember to omit the Gloria, as I forgot yesterday, you know, using setting three, which we've been using since 1941, you really get in the zone. And if you're not thinking, <laughs> it's easy to go, go on autopilot. But in, in any case, this will be included in our next few Sunday services as well um, to help us focus our attention on the coming of the Messiah. And so a little bit about the author, Stephen P. Starkey, but born in 1955, so he's still He's still around somewhere. Um, but our hymnal includes 32 hymns written by Starkey. That's an impressive number. And I mean, the reason for that is he he writes very good hymns. Um, I 32, we're not going to list all of them, but I'll, I'll share with you just some of the names. Um, hymn 342 is called What Hope and Eden Promise, or excuse me, What Hope and Eden Prophesied. I have that um, scheduled for our Wednesday evening service on December 20th, uh, 362, O Sing of Christ. That's a Christmas hymn that I am planning on using on Christmas Day. Jesus Once with Sinners Numbered is an epiphany hymn specifically related to the baptism of our Lord. Jesus Greatest at the Table, Maundy Thursday. Um, All the Earth with Joy is Sounding is an Easter hymn. Holy Spirit, the Dove Sent from Heaven. That's a Pentecost hymn. We actually did use that one um, earlier in the year. I guess, nine or 10 months ago. It's a very uh, unique tune on that one. And he did not actually write that. That's a translation. A handful of these 32 are translations. Um, going ahead, the tree of life is a just, it's in the justification section of our hymnal. Beautiful hymn. I, I would, that's probably my favorite by him. And it's, I would say one of the top five hymns of the 20th century, maybe even top three, just a great hymn connecting the tree of life to the tree of the cross. Um, <clears throat> you have uh, in the shattered bliss of Eden is another justification hymn based on the Genesis 3 account. You have as rebels, Lord, who foolishly have wandered. That's a confession absolution hymn. Consider how the birds above. That one's based on Matthew 6, where Jesus says, consider the, the birds, consider the lilies. Um, there's a time for everything is based on Ecclesiastes 3. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. You might be wondering why that's on the list, because that one is in the old TLH. And the reason is Starkey wrote three new verses for it. So the version you're familiar with is 826. 827, this, the first verse is the same, but verses three, 2, 3, and 4 are written by Starkey. And the very, very good verses. One is based on Jesus' parable of the hours. One is based on Isaiah 55, as the rain and snow come down from heaven and so on. Great hymn there. Um, 860, Gracious Savior, Grant Your Blessing is a marriage hymn. You have Light of Light, O Soul Begotten is a good beginning of service hymn. We used that one in October. Uh, Jesus sat with his disciples. Um, and I skipped one. All your works, all you works of God, bless the Lord is a traditional canticle, actually based on the song of the three young men. That's one of those apocryphal works that we don't include in our scriptures. Um, but it's a traditional Christian canticle. There would have been a version of it in, in the Lutheran hymnal, not this one, obviously. 
Um, Jesus sat with his disciples is based on the Beatitudes. My soul rejoices is based on the Magnificat or the Song of Mary. We praise you and acknowledge you. We just use that one on, in our Thanksgiving service to the tune of Jupiter. And so um, that's just a very briefly, I just went through about about 60% of those 32 hymns. You notice the versatility of his hymns. He has something for every season and various occasions, Christmas and Advent and Lent and Easter and Pentecost and a wedding, you know, beginning of service, very, very wide range of topics and Bible passages and seasons and occasions. Um, and as I said earlier, I would consider him to be a, one of the greatest hymn writers of of our time. So, and that that's why there are 32 of his hymns in, in this hymnal. So we'll we'll consider a number of Bible passages on which the content of this hymn is based. Um, first of all, Jeremiah 33, 15, and 16. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. And of course, that one served as our sermon text and Old Testament lesson yesterday. We also have Genesis 22, 16 to 18. By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. And I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. That's the promise of God to Abraham. <clears throat> Isaiah 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who, have, those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. And the primary passage of scripture on which this uh, hymn is based is Luke 1. We'll focus on verses 68 to 79. And this is Zechariah speaking. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And so we consider hymn 936, Sing Praise to the God of Israel. Sing praise to the God of Israel. Sing praise for his visitation, redeeming his people from their sin, accomplishing their salvation. Upraising a mighty horn within the house of his servant, David. God spoke by the prophets long ago, his promise on oath recalling to Abram, to Abraham made in former years of vanquishing foes appalling that those he delivered from their fears might gladly and truly serve him. You child will go on before the Lord as prophet, his way preparing to speak on behalf of God most high his counsel of truth declaring, rich mercy and grace for all, whereby iniquity is forgiven. O bright rising sun, now shine on us in need of illumination. Come scatter the shades of sin and death and, and shatter their domination. Be guiding our footsteps on the path of peace in your presence dawning. Amen. We also pray 
Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we also join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for our devotion. The Lord be with you throughout the day ahead.